What if I told you that you could add data from your third-party systems, things like Salesforce or Confluence, even a website, so that they show up right inside of Copilot, even if you have the web grounding disabled? And then what if I told you that this feature has been around since before Copilot was even a thing? Sound interesting? I'm going to tell you all about graph connectors and walk you through how to set this whole thing up. So let's get into it. So some basics here. What is a graph connector? First, we need to talk about graph to make sure you understand what that is. Graph is the system that all of your data within Microsoft 365 is kind of stored in. Graph is kind of the, 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 the index, you could call it, that knows about all of your data, but also things like who you talk with on a regular basis and through through teams, uh, all your the coworkers, your reporting structure, manager, things like that. It knows your social graph information. It knows the data that you have access to. It actually knows the data that everyone has access to. Any data in M365 is going to be located in the graph. So graph knows of, of all of the data, but also the permissions. So it knows what you personally have access to. This is how the Microsoft search bar has always worked. And M365 Copilot is also using graph as a data source. Even though it uses a, the semantic index instead of the graph directly, it knows about all of the data in your organization because of graph. Now, a graph connector is a way to take external data and put it into graph. So your, all of your existing data in SharePoint and OneDrive, that's in graph. But if you have something like ServiceNow as your ticketing system, and you've got some, you, you want to make sure all of your tickets can be found in Copilot, you would use a graph connector to ingest all of that content so that it's also stored in graph. Now it'll all it'll be referencing ServiceNow. And if you click on, you know, a link in in a search result, for instance, that is a ServiceNow piece of you know, a ServiceNow ticket, it would take you into ServiceNow. So it doesn't duplicate the information necessarily, but it makes graph aware of that data. We're going to go through an example of that, but I'm not going to set up ServiceNow. That's not even why you're here, but I'm going to do, start with a simpler example of a basic website, and we're going to use my website as an example. So I'm in the M365 Admin Center right now because you will need to be an admin to set up a graph connector. And in the M365 Admin Center, under settings, you'll see search and intelligence. This is where we're going to be going to access, to be able to create a new graph connector. And this can, by the way, involve some custom coding, but for a lot of the common use cases, it's going to be a much simpler process, as you'll see. But we're going to go into the data sources tab. This is where all of your existing graph connectors are listed. Any, any other system that is being uh, synced to graph to, to make graph aware of that content, yeah, it will be here. I have nothing set up right now, so I'm going to click on Add Connection. I'm going to create a new data source that will be loaded into graph. You'll see all of those different ones. You'll see WordPress.org. You'll see Salesforce, Confluence, all a lot of those big enterprise systems you will see in here. Uh, Trello boards, uh, Azure DevOps, uh, Azure SQL. There's a, there's a lot in here as well as more common things like maybe uh, Google Drive. You'll see these are in preview right now. So there's a lot of connectors that are continuing to get added here. We're going to use the Enterprise Website Cloud. This is just the generic website connector. So I'm going to click on that and click Next. I'm just going to call mine uh, stevecorey.com as the display name. Now, users will see this in the, in the context or the references of, uh, of the Copilot responses that use these articles. Type in the website. And we'll click Add, and I'll make sure the checkbox is checked so it only uses the pages that are listed in the sitemap. The authentication type, if that rep, if the website requires to be authenticated to to access it, more common with the enterprise uh, scenarios like ServiceNow or something, then you would specify that. In this case, there's no authentication. It's a public website. 
Uh, now, you could limit the rollout to a particular audience. This could be useful for an, a couple of different situations. Number one, the content only should be seen by a particular group. Maybe it's the, the group that has access to that resource. Or the other one is maybe you want this to roll out to a pilot group first before rolling it out to the, uh, the, the broad audience of your organization. Either one of those are, are common scenarios. In this case, I'm just going to roll it out to everyone. You click the checkbox just just to confirm you are aware that Microsoft's going to be creating a connection to uh, another data source and ingesting that content into Graph. And then we click on Create. Now, there's going to be one other option that will pop up that is new, and it's because of M365 Copilot. And here's the new thing that has been added because of Copilot. This is the, the information that Copilot will use uh, to understand when to use this particular content. So this is how you're going to tell Copilot what this data is for. In this case, this information provides blog articles uh, about SharePoint and Microsoft 365. So this will give it the context to know when, when this, what this connector is used for. And then based on a user's prompt, it will uh, select this as part of the grounding to return responses with. We'll click on save. And now it's, you see the, uh, towards the top here, it is now syncing the data. So it's going to take a little while. If we click done here, we'll see our new connector has been added and the connection state is preparing to sync. So this is going to take a little bit of time, in my case, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll come back when this is done and check out the results. So now our new graph connector has finished. Uh, it, the connection state is ready, so this is ready to be used by end users. Let's go jump to Copilot and see how this looks. So I'm in M365 Copilot. I've got it set to use the Work tab, so it's only going to be grounding on organization data. In addition, I have the web grounding disabled. Let's add in a prompt and see if this is going to return our correct data. I'll put in a prompt. How do I get started with JSON formatting in SharePoint Online? Definitely something I've covered on my blog a number of times. So let's see what the response is from Copilot. So it's, I already see a citation. Uh, it's referencing me. I believe it's got the correct information. Uh, we could check our references down here and we'll see that this it pulled from the beginner's guide to mastering list JSON formatting in SharePoint, one of my most popular articles. And you'll know it's using our graph connector and not the public web because of the source you see down here. It says stevecorey.com. It's used two different pages from my blog and then an email, which I'm not even sure what that was about, but it was probably some correspondence with one of you. So it did return our information from the graph connector. Remember, this can work even if you have web grounding disabled, which I do on my tenant, uh, just to test out scenarios like this. I can always hop over to web mode if I need to do it that way. But there you have it. You've got a custom graph connector pulling from an internet web source, and then Copilot is using that as a grounding source. Now, there's a lot of other things that you could do with these graph connectors. We can click on the connector to get more information about this. We can check any crawl information, how often it's going to be crawling, because this will continue to update based on new blog posts I put out, or in the case of an enterprise system like Confluence, if you're pulling in knowledge base articles, as new ones are published, the graph connector will routinely grab those and update a graph so that it knows about the latest content. There are some options for editing the schema and what sort of information can can be used to query and all that. That's getting a bit more advanced than what I want to cover in this video. But let me know down in the comments below if you're interested in learning more about these and seeing other examples, because this will benefit Copilot, but it also benefits the Microsoft search bar at the top of pretty much everything in M365. Because since that uses graph as well, this data can be returned and the Microsoft search bar. So it kind of serves as double duty there. Uh, and, and so you can get a lot of benefit even if you don't have M365 Copilot licenses. Let me know what you think of this. Is this cool? I think it's pretty cool. And a lot of people have no idea that it's even an option. 
within their and within their environment. Let me know down below, and if you want to see more great videos, then click or tap the screen, and I'll see you over there.